Hey there folks, welcome to the video and here I'm going to be talking about the Formula 1 game. As Codemasters today have announced F1 2020 will be out on the 10th of July. Now this is a couple of weeks later than the F1 2019 release. Now we could say that's because of the current global situation and so on. Uh, which it most likely is. But there are so many amazing things about this, I just want to talk about it right now. Um, I'm honestly hoping it's going to be one of the best ones yet. The... Probably the biggest one, which I'll talk about right away, so that uh, you guys can then clear off, is the My Team thing, be the 11th team on the grid. Um, so it seems to be like a kind of separate way of doing career mode, um, where you will have your own kind of team and you'll be a driver manager. Now, whether or not that means that you can't be fired might be a different thing, and I'm sure people, when they will be able to get their hands on it, will be doing all those kinds of weird things, trying to figure out, can you actually get fired from your own team? Um, also, it would be interesting to figure out what happens in regards to your own drivers and how this would play into the transfers thing, provided that the transfers thing is staying on for this season. Like, who would be the extra driver? Would it be people coming up from F2, or would it be, like, you'd have one of, say, uh, Devin Butler or um, Lucas Faber? Like, we'll probably find that out over the course of um, this stuff unfolding. Um, but there are also a couple of other little bits and pieces to career mode, including... Um, Apparently more flexibility with the F2 um, introduction. Hopefully that means you can do like a full season. Um, by the looks of things, it sounds like it's going to be launching with the 2019 content and then them added in 2020 later like they did last season with the um, 2018 and then the 2019 later. Um, but what's also going to be here are both Hanoi and Zandvoort, a 22 race calendar. Whether or not F1 actually has a 22 race calendar, probably not as well as shorter 10 or 16 options. Now, I know a lot of you are probably going to be making jokes like that's going to be, you could do the F1 season, but at the same time, like, that really helps people who can't really do as much of it, um, like people who are kind of more casual gamers. Um, at the same time, there's a Michael Schumacher Deluxe Edition, uh, which adds the Jordan 191, the Benetton B194 from 1994, the Benetton B195 from 1995, and the F1 2000. Now... That's pretty cool. Um, it's nice to have more Schumacher content. It's it's always going to be fun to have that. I'd like to see a bit more um, Hamilton content as well, but then I guess we already have the 2008-2010 um, McLarens. And I would like to see like some of the older Mercedes in there as well, because I think that would be pretty cool. Especially to see how the Codemasters have come along in that time, because that's what the... Um, Having the 2010 cars did, it showed like how the games have progressed since Codemasters have the license. But that's a debate for another time. Um, I think my favourite feature, personally, isn't actually the Mind Team thing, which would be weird because that's something that I'd be like, yes, this is amazing, this is wonderful. My favourite feature is the fact that the split screen's back. Um, so, I don't know how well this is going to work. I know with a lot of um, current gen games, they end up saying, oh, if we're playing split screen, it means that you're going to have to um, lower the graphics settings. They intentionally, like, drop the graphics settings and things like that. Um, I hope that doesn't actually happen. Um, but at the same time, I love the idea that split screen is back. Um, it shows that we've gotten through that weird kind of phase where it was, like, so difficult. It was too difficult for developers to make stuff for... Uh, the current generation of consoles where it had split screen and it all had to be single player. I mean, I've always loved having split screen in F1 games. It's one of the reasons why F1 2012 still remains one of my favourite Cody's F1 games. And actually, the two F1 games that I have installed on my computer right now are 2019 and 2012. But yeah, um, there are a couple of other little bits and pieces in here too, um, such as there was a little bit which said that you will need a internet connection to download the final versions of the cars, as well as um, as well as downloading the F2 2020 season content. Like a lot of the renders, all the renders for liveries seem to be done more or less on the same car, same base car. So I don't know if they're starting off with a kind of league edition and then working up from there. I would like to see it as like these cars remain in legacy as like a kind of league edition cars. And then you also have like the actual cars come in for the proper season content. Um, because that's one of the things that I think was missing. Um, I know that with 2019 there was 
a bit of a weird thing, and I know this because I spread out my first three or four races of my career mode so much, where I would be finishing one race, and then all of a sudden I go to the next race, and the performance was literally completely different because all the charts had been upset again. So I don't know. Um, I'm. I mean, I'm really excited for this. Um, I am tempted just to pre-order right away. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.